Hi, I'm Dr. John Aquaviva, Professor of Exercise Science at Wingate University, and welcome to this edition of The Fitness Doctor. For over 20 years, I've been involved in fitness and exercise, both as a professor and a practitioner. My aim is to help people improve their fitness, weight management, and overall health. For years now, colleges and universities have offered their students a variety of experiences in addition to traditional in-class learning. Internships allow the students to apply what they learn in class. On this series, we take a closer look at the internship experience, in particular, internships related to fitness. I want to welcome to the show current interns Megan Berry and Julia Nichols, both students here at Wingate. First, we'll start with you, Megan. Uh, welcome to the show, both of you. And uh, Megan, start with, uh, tell us your major and what your internship uh, here at the university is. Okay. Um, well, I major in community and commercial recreation. Okay. And I'm an intern here uh, with Campus Rec under the fitness and wellness. Okay. Um, I work in the DPC mainly. Okay. In the fitness room. And, and tell me a few of your responsibilities. Like, uh, what do you do on an average day or, or just in general, what do you do? Okay, an time? average day, I'll come into the office, um, work on a little bit of programming. Uh, programming, for instance. Um, uh, there's a past program was Spring Break Challenge, and a future program is Finish it, finish strong. Okay. Um, so that'll come out in April, and then I usually I have three personal training clients okay. that I work with, and I train two of those in the morning and one in the afternoon. How many days a week do you do that? Um, two of them are two days a week. One of them is three days a week. Now, in this internship, is a higher percentage dealing with students more or some, the faculty and staff? Um, I work closely with the students, but I also shadow and work with Heather Delange, um, and she works mostly with faculty and staff. Sure. Um, I do some things with her, uh, especially with her PE classes. Mm -hmm. I help out with that as well. And how many hours a week do you engage in this internship? Um, it's supposed to be seven to 10, but I see myself more like 10 to 12. Oh, is that right? <laughs> yes. And t the total amount of hours for this internship is? 100. 100. Julia, tell us about your experience. <clears throat> in, uh, first of all, your major, and then uh, t talk a little bit about the internship. Yeah, my major is health and physical education, and um, I've been an intern at the Monroe Aquatic and Fitness Center uh, in Monroe. And so Sometimes we shorten that to just to the to MAC. To the MAC, right. Okay, and then tell us about your experience there. Um, I've been observing personal, a personal trainer and also just different um, group exercise classes and they have people on the floor at all times in the fitness room and so um, giving orientations for new members and things like that. They're big on um, making sure their members know the opportunities that they have at their fitness center or in the fitness center and at sure. their um, just at the MAC and so um, I've been able to observe that and they also have a wellness center so um, they do measurements and things like that so that people can know how they're improving and so I've gotten to observe just all the different aspects of sure. um, that health center. And how many hours a week? Same thing as About Megan? Eight. About eight. You average eight a week. Mm -hmm. and, and, and staying with you, Julia, what is the most um, significant thing that you've experienced this semester thus far? So we're about halfway through your internship, mm -hmm. maybe a little more. What would you say is the most significant or interesting aspect of the internship? I think just seeing and realizing that how, um, how much people are affected and motivated by the trainers there or the instructors. Um, the MAC has classes all throughout the day um, where an instructor leads it and um, they're highly attended for all different age, ages and um, levels of fitness and so just being um, encouraged almost by how much the instructors and um, the trainers kind of help and how much the members are affected by those and motivated by sure. um, the trainers. So you can easily see, for instance, people's health programs or in particular fitness programs mm -hmm. falling apart if it wasn't for institutions or programs that are offered like at the moment. Right. You, you can tell that people come because of sometimes they're accountable to their exercise daily because of the trainers sure. and um, the and classes that are offered. Sure. Uh, Megan, I would say, in fact, I think I'm answering this question for you. You put on a program, created a program called the Fitness Challenge. Mm -hmm. And is it safe to say that this is the most significant thing that's happened in the, yeah. 
Uh, t- tell me about the fitness challenge. It's First of all, how'd you get the idea for this? Um, I actually got the idea of uh, the grad assistant last year. She put it on. Um, it was the spring break challenge. It was the month before spring break. And it was like the f- second week people were back from uh, winter break. So it was just kind of to establish a routine for people okay. to get into the gym, um, get them in shape for spring break, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Um, I thought it was very significant especially after I put out a survey and I saw the results. Um, people were really happy with it. People very, they were, they were happy, they were motivated. More people uh, admitted that they were going to the gym now from the program. Um, from last year's program. Yes, and, and from just in general with themselves. Um, they said yes, they, it helped them establish a routine and they are in the gym more now that the program is over. Perfect, so which is really... It's rewarding, yeah. and, and of course for me, I put it on, but as, as well as for them because they, they liked it. They liked the motivation, and they liked what they saw. Tell us about the challenge. What, what, what did it entail? Okay. Synopsis um, of that. It was a four-week program, and basically each participant had to attend the fitness center for 90 minutes a week or two fitness classes, as well as complete a challenge. They had uh, three options of a challenge. One week was cardio, the next week was like weight and body strength, um, et cetera, goes on. Um, And they could complete one challenge. Uh, They had an option of three, whichever they felt best suited them. Um, And once they did that and they got their 90 minutes or their classes, their name went into a drawing. So each week it there was a little bit of motivation to win a prize, yeah. but most people said that their motivation came from um, improving their health and fitness. And how many people participated in this? 130. And how many of those were students? Uh, about 80. Those are great numbers. Yes. And you're, that was one of the surprises of this internship, yes. right? Because my guess is you, get, you guys expected maybe half of that. Yes, like you because last year, I went off last year's program, they had 70 people sign up and eight finish. And then this year, this of year, the 120, how many finished? Um, I would say around 60. Awesome. So it was about half, but it went down in about the third week and back up the fourth week. So. Um, now, you're just starting this kind of this venture of being in the fitness field and being on the other side of the desk, so to speak. Mm-hmm. You know, you've been learning a lot of stuff in the classroom, and now you're implementing it or applying that. What about the experience, especially with the students, surprises you were like that that you really didn't expect or know coming into this um i have learned that a lot of people don't know much about fitness yeah uh, i grew up in sports so it was always second nature to me yeah i always had to stretch and warm up and cool down and, and run five miles and all those terms are new right, to them right right yeah. um a lot of people don't know how to do what i would consider simple exercises so just the knowledge, the lack of knowledge that a common person might have was a definite surprise. What do you think the most significant thing that you've taught somebody uh, in general? Uh, something about like the warm up or the cool down or just about the basic principles of exercise? What would it be? Um, I would just say that proper form. Hmm. People will have improper form on a lot of things. And so you do a lot of instruction? Yes. Julia, what about you with the people? Now, you know, you're dealing with a different clientele, at least for the most part. You're dealing mostly with students, Megan. Julia, you're dealing mostly with um, adults mm-hmm. that are trying to get in shape, maybe for the first time or later, uh, or for the first time in a long time. Was, is there anything that surprised you about the clientele there? Yeah, um, definitely even taking what I've learned from school and um, kind of putting it into practice, I was surprised that, or. I feel like it's been a good opportunity to learn on my feet because um, I saw that every person is different and um, more than ever I saw that or I've learned that every person, a lot of people come in with different physical disabilities, things they literally can't do because a doctor told them or um, different things like that. So having to work around different physical disabilities has been huge. Um, because it's not, it doesn't just come easy. You can't just tell them to do something, they can automatically do it. Um, can you give so a specific that, example? Um, like if someone has had three back surgeries or something like that, um, there's people who 
can only, their heart rate can only go to a certain number that's lower than, a lot lower than the average person exercising. And so um, they really, you really have to monitor, you have to have them on um, a heart, like a, a monitor, you know, yeah, a monitor to check their heart rate and things like that. And so just modifications that I haven't learned yet um, because I've worked with high school students or elementary school yeah. students. And so um, just learning in that way of how to modify depending on the person's um, maybe d physical disability or just um, their fitness level. Sure. And, and what's next for you have a few more weeks left in your internship. What is what's upcoming that you haven't experienced so far? Is there anything new that you're about to experience in the internship? Yeah, I'm excited. I get to, um, I guess, promote or talk to um, the staff of the fitness room um, within the next couple of days about um, high intensity interval training and just trying to give them some suggestions on how they can um, give ideas to the members as they're talking to them on the floor or as they're given an orientation. And so um, giving ideas of how they can work harder for a shorter amount of time. And so they don't have to be on the treadmill for an hour, but they can work harder and maybe be in the gym for 30 minutes or 40 Or maybe hours. even less, right? Uh, yeah. And so, so depending 15 on, or 20 minutes, depending yeah, on the depending intensity. Yeah, depending on how they, hard they work. And so, so this presentation will be to the, some of the, the staff, staff members. Mm -hmm. Great. So you're really switching roles here. During the morning, you're behind the desk and listening to professors, and now you're going to be kind of like the professor role. Mm -hmm. And when does this take place? Tonight, actually. Oh, got it. No <laughs> reason to be nervous. <laughs> and uh, asking um, uh, Megan the same question, um, what, what's coming up in the next few weeks that you haven't experienced before this? Um, implementing a whole new program. Another challenge of sort? Um, it's not going to be as involved as the challenge. It's just called Finish Strong. And the purpose of it is to get students to finish strong in the gym, to finish strong academically and all that. So it's not as demanding, but we want students to come to our fitness classes, relieve a little bit of stress, take a study break. And with that, we have a new class, like Julie was talking about, high intensity. Sure. And it's only a 30 minute class. and. It's literally warm it took up. It place in the DPC mm -hmm. dance room. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's aerobics just room. warm up. You work out hard for about 15 minutes and then you cool down and then you're done. And how, um, how often will this be offered to the students? Three days a week. And this it, will be fairly new, right? This yes. Is, it, when is this is our second week currently Got it. and it'll continue on. Um, that, I, that's, I think, is... Um, and your primary motivation here was because you know the stress level goes up. Goes and that, up, and finals that, are coming. And that there needs to be a release valve of some sort, mm -hmm. and this is the way it's going to be offered. Mm -hmm. This will be interesting to see how many people participate yes. in this. Now, last question uh, before we go. Um, do you see the internship as more fun or more work? Fun. You more, more, it's more fun. Yeah. And so. going into it, did you think it would be more work than it would be fun? I didn't really know what I was going to Didn't know what to expect from Yeah. It. But it's definitely more fun. Yes. That's great. That's great yeah. to hear. Julia? Yeah, I would say more fun because you get to kind of get into the people's world, the members' world, and kind of what, learn different things about them. And um, I don't know, it's just fun to get to know new people. And so, yeah, I feel like it's fun. That's me. great to hear. In fact, that's, of course, exactly what we want here for all the interns, is even though it's like a work type experience, you always want to enjoy what you're doing. So that's great. And we'll end on that positive note. Megan and Julia, uh, we uh, thank you for being on the show. We hope you come back. Uh, stay tuned after the break. We'll welcome a student who has done some research in the world of exercise and health. Welcome back to The Fitness Doctor. For years now, colleges and universities have offered their students a variety of experiences in addition to traditional in-class learning. Research is not just reserved for students in their doctorate or master's programs anymore. Wingate University is one of the many institutions to offer this opportunity to undergraduate students. Let's take a closer look at undergraduate research, in particular research originated and conducted in the School of Sports Sciences here at Wingate University. Joining me is senior Emma Harnett. Emma, welcome to the program. Thank you. Uh, you're an athletic training major. Talk a little bit about that before we uh, go into your research. So I'm a senior at Wingate 
uh, university. And as an athletic training major, um, we attend all different university events because our profession goes to different sporting events, and we provide the medical aspect um, to injured athletes. We do prevention, rehabilitation, um, post and pre um, sure. sporting events, so kind of encompass everything. And, and this will lead into your research. Part of your experience and part of your, um, your classes, you guys study how to prevent injury. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about that and, and the role that exercise plays there. Um, we like to talk to our athletes and educate them on how best to prepare for their season. So we want to make sure that they're exercising in the right way, um, fueling their bodies as to what they eat due to what type of exercise they're doing. Um, and that kind of played a role into my research because we were looking at the specific type of exercise and what effects it has on your body. Sure. And let's, let's talk about your research and, and uh, let's talk about some specifics on that. First of all, it was you were one of the few people granted a summer research grant. Mm -hmm. And um, talk about the, the subject, the topic that, that uh, was studied. So we um, decided to do a case study. So we took one student who was highly athletic, um, worked out a lot, and we decided to put him through six different workouts and look at his body and see how his metabolism was working um, post-exercise at one hour and six hours. Uh, so we had him do um, interval training, um, longer distant runs. We had him work out with weights, and we actually had him do a high-intensity interval training or HIIT training. Um, and then we had him kind of lay down on a table. We hook him up to this really cool machine, get the mouthpiece, um, and we kind of recorded the data of how much oxygen he's taking in and how much carbon dioxide he's putting out. And what is this, what, what information, why is this information important? Um, so the way your body works is the, based on your metabolism, how much oxygen you're taking in is directly related to how many calories you're burning. So as most people know that are active in workout, they know that when they're working out, they are burning extra calories than if they didn't work out. And that's really what motivates a lot of people to work out. Right. Um, what a lot of people don't know is that after they work out, they're still receiving multiple benefits from their workout that they just did. Um, and one term that we really look at is EPOC, um, excess post-exercise oxygen consumption. So after you work out and you're kind of coming down from your workout, your body's still taking in more oxygen than it normally would just on your regular day-to-day -day basis when you don't work out. And so actually when you're done working out, you're still burning those extra calories. And that's what, one of the things that we really wanted to look at to see which type of exercise gave you the longer benefits. And, and again, what we did with the, what you did with the subject was we uh, collected this data and in particular one hour and then again six hours later and then to see the difference not only between the one and six hour mark but between the different modes of exercise. So this actually took place over several days, didn't it? It was a couple of weeks. Um, when you do work out, it takes a couple of, day, of days for your body to fully recover, whether it's your muscles, your lungs, your heart. Um, make sure you want to step away from the the epoch period so we want to make sure we targeted each individual exercise without kind of overlapping so we actually were only able to do two workouts a week so it took it took actually f four weeks because we did a baseline and then we did two exercises per week and we ended up doing six exercise regimens um, with our subject got it now in particular what what did the data collected how did this add to the existing literature involved in exercise science um, many of the, a lot of the literature kind of focuses on EPOC and what it does in different types of exercise, but none of the literature has looked at this wide range and compared um, aerobic training to anaerobic training. And there is not a lot of literature on HIT training, um, and that's kind of what we were kind of focusing on, hoping to get some see some benefits out of. And so we were able to, even though it was one subject, we were able to look at a wider range of exercises and compare them to each other. Now you mentioned HIT training, which stands for high intensity interval training. It's HIT with two eyes, right? Mm -hmm. Or you can even just say uh, high intensity training. Right. Uh, both interchangeable terms. Give us some examples of actual programs that are considered HIT training. Um, I think the most popular one right now would be a CrossFit, and most people that do CrossFit know that you know you're working out for a shorter period of time, so your intensity can be higher. So you're going very hard sure. for. 15, 20, 25 minutes, which is not a very long workout. And usually incorporating weights and running, sprinting, pull-ups, push-ups, 
stuff of that nature that's really really get your heart rate up. True high, high intensity training. Very high, yes. And the names of other forms of high intensity training, so CrossFit would be one, what would be a couple other ones? Um, insanity, some insanity workouts can be considered high intensity training, some P90X. Um, there's com they're coming out with some new ones now. Um, just keep your eyes peeled for them. That's right, that's right. Um, how did you personally benefit from the research that you, or the data that you collected from this research? Um, I actually not only benefited from the knowledge that we gained from doing the actual research, but I got to delve deeper into the research process and how that works. And dealing with the subject, we analyzed the data, public speaking, I've gone to, I've presented, um, and we're also going to do a couple other presentations. So overall, it was a wide range of a learning experience for me. So, so what's coming up next with the data that you collected? So you've already presented to the college community, mm -hmm. and then what's next? Um, in April, we're going to present at the National Convention AFERD, um, which is a convention that's actually going to be held in Charlotte this year, which is kind of convenient. Actually, yeah. yeah. So the National Conference, um, and that's about a 75-minute presentation to anybody in the United States or international that wants to come and kind of learn more about the HIT training. And we're actually working on um, combining our putting our heads together and writing up a manuscript to hopefully send into a different pub, uh, some sports science publications that might be interested in the research that we have to offer. Sure. Now, what about the, the experience itself? Was there any surprises? Was there anything that you didn't really expect to run into? Or thinking about it ahead of time, was there anything that kind of occurred that you thought, well, I didn't expect this to happen? Was there anything in the process that happened like that? Um, I thought that... I guess I wasn't, um, like I said, I learned a lot about the research process and the fact that we had one subject that we were doing it with. Yeah. Um, even though when looking at the data myself, I was like, wow, that is crazy. The numbers didn't really play out how I thought they would just because you can only compare one person to themselves so many ways. That's right. um, but I hope that in the future that people will be able to kind of look at my study and maybe do some more calculations on their own and really draw stronger conclusions. Sure. But it's definitely kind of a step in the right direction in order for researching on specifically HIT programs and what they offer your body. That's right. In fact, something like this is not definitive to the literature. In other words, rarely does somebody do a study or collect data and everybody says, okay, nothing else needs to be done. All you did with this research was just add to the already existing body of research, right? Yes, right. So, like I said, like we didn't have definitive answers, but in a topic like this, it's going to take you years to reach those, those answers. So we're just kind of adding, yeah, exactly. So yeah. we're just kind of adding and putting out different um, data for other people to kind of look at and think about and kind of maybe go in their own direction with that. Or just simply add on to, like for instance, exactly. do the same similar study and then just have more subjects and then compare the within those subjects, not only compare it to our data, but um, compare it to the uh, other subjects within that actual study. Right, and because we have, um, this topic has been limited, the research is very limited, hopefully yeah. it will kind of prompt people to become more interested and as HIT training becomes more and more popular, I can only imagine the research that will be done in the next 10 years. Sure. Now, to the to your research in particular, um, a lot of things had to be controlled with the subject, didn't they? Like, yeah. what, were, what were some of the things that had to be controlled? So give us some insight into that. Um, so our subject, um, Brian, he wanted a little shout out, <laughs> um, he had to make sure that he was on campus every day to start the workout exactly the same way, ate the same breakfast every day, um, and we actually bought him Subway lunch, the same sub, um, every day that he did the workout. And unfortunately for him, we had to ask him to refrain from all activities between testing days because like I said, it takes a while for your body to come down from a a workout, especially the ones that we were putting him through, yeah. and we wanted to make sure that we got him to baseline again before we moved on to the next uh, workout. And, and this gives some great insight into the research process because often we, we don't, we think about the data and we kind of analyze the data, but we don't think about actually what the subjects go through, and we put Brian through quite a bit, didn't we? Yeah, and he was a great subject. He did everything we asked. He, he showed up on time. He was one or two minutes late, uh, he uh, ran out of gas one day, but I mean, it was good. And he actually had, a, when we put him down on the table to hook him up to our Cardio 2 machine, yeah. there's like a bulky mouthpiece. And um, he did a great job just laying there, relaxing and 
trying to just let the his body completely rest after his workout so we could get some accurate readings. And get some insight into the process of data collection. So he's lying down yep. and, and there's a nose clip and there's a mouthpiece and, and how long is he there? Um, we had him on the table for 40 minutes and we only used the data that we collected between 30 and 40 minutes. So we gave his body 30, 30 minutes to kind of get accustomed to this big chunky mouthpiece and right. the nose plug. Um, and so then we felt like it was a pretty reliable reading between 30 and 40 minutes. So we only really did 10 minutes of the data collection. But then again, we did do this one hour in six hours. So That's it was right. about, you know, 40 minutes to an hour workout, another hour for the first reading and another hour for the second reading. So he stuck with it and it went really smoothly. I agree. He was a great subject great. for this. And Brian would probably admit like most, or I shouldn't say like most, but certainly other subjects in such a uh, experiment that it was as taxing to do the data collection uh, as it was to do the workouts. In fact, he probably got energy from the workouts and of course he shared with us by the end that he's, he's not going to miss the data collection. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and what else about the, the internship experience? Like, for instance, would you, if somebody came up to you and said, hey, listen, I have, I have the opportunity to be a, uh, a summer uh, internship or summer um, research uh, recipient, what would you tell them as far as if they said, would you recommend this, Emma? I would 110% recommend this. I think it's a, a great opportunity, um, not only to connect with faculty, um, but kind of delve into something that you're interested in and, and just explore more about it. And my biggest piece of advice would be pick something that you're really interested in, that yeah. you're spending hours reading articles and hours planning and carrying out. So you got to make sure that that's something that you really want to know more about. And the time flies when you're having fun. So if, if you like what you're doing, then it doesn't seem as much work. And I was here on campus um, over the summer, so I got to kind of meet some cool people because campus has less people on around on, during summer. So I kind of expanded my group of friends as well, which was kind of fun. And some of the bonuses for doing this, uh, um, the research was you, you got some credit for it, correct? Was uh, there credit not not school that? credit, but okay. you do get paid to carry out your research. Yeah, and then and there was additional monies too to take care of any costs. And one of the things that we did with our subject because it was so taxing on them physically and their time, we actually paid our subject, didn't we? Yeah, um, and really we kind of are paying them for work because it's it's a toll on your body. Yeah. And for someone like him who's just so active from day to day, it was really work for him to not go and work out and not go and play golf and sure. you know keep those other days um, very limited in his activity. So. It's a lot of hard work on his end, so we were thankful that we had such a great subject to work with, and it made things on our end a lot easier. Sure. That's all we have time for. I want to thank you for being on the show. Um, join us again on this program, and I want to thank all guests today, Megan Berry, Julia Nichols, and Emma Harnett. And join us next time as we talk about topics designed to help you stay fit and enjoy overall health. And remember, people don't stop playing because they get old. They get old because they stop playing. See you next time on The Fitness Doctor.